Hello again. Part three on my Yezu external speaker. So the FT710 AESS speaker, part three. And I did order from Amazon. Actually, it's, although I ordered it through Amazon, it's a Parts Express part. And I'll leave links for both of those down below. But um, this is just a little two and a half inch speaker that, as you can see, has a much bigger magnet than the stock speaker has. Actually, about the same size. Pretty close to the same size, anyway. Uh, this one has much more excursion, so it should have better bass response than the stock speaker. It is an 8 ohm speaker, matches the original, so we don't have to worry about that. And I've been looking at the mounting of this thing, and the factory setup had a mounting that went something like this. So the speaker would set down in here, like so, the wires would come through this bracket. And then this bracket just kind of sandwiched it between the plastic and the steel. And then kind of compressed it up against that O-ring that's in there. So clearly, that's not going to work with this replacement speaker that I've purchased. So what I'm going to have to do in that case is I'm going to have to put this in first. And then we're just going to put this on the back side, like so. And these holes do not quite match up. It looks like I might have to actually grind this flange down a little bit so that it will come this way a little bit. And it looks like I might have to also oversize these holes just a little bit, not much. So it looks like it's, it's close. So I'll either punch these holes oversized with a drill bit, or I'll just oblong the slots. I think it'd actually be better just to make them oversized. And it'll give me a little wiggle room. And then I'll have to grind off that bottom edge just a little bit. And uh, I'm going to try that first and go ahead and skirt all together just to do a test to see what it sounds like. And if I like the result, then what I'll do is I'll chuck this piece up in the lathe with a four-jaw chuck. And I'm just going to bore this out completely. Leave the screw holes, of course. But I'm just going to bore this center out so there's nothing in between it and this grill. But only I'm only going to do that after I'm satisfied with the result. So I'm going to run out in the shop and do that and right now. Just oversize the holes. So we'll put it together and do a test. And I'll be right back. And I'm back. And all I did was just grind a little bit off this flange. And you can see this is kind of bent. It was actually bent out of the box. It's just sheet metal on this. So I straightened it out as best I could. But anyway, I ground a little bit off this side and then I just oversized these holes. And it does fit now. It'd be kind of nice if I could just leave this sheet metal bracket out of it, but unfortunately it has to be there for the sides to bolt on. Actually, I should say for the grill to bolt on to the rest of the enclosure, it needs to be there. So I can't delete it, unfortunately, without coming up with some sort of replacement for it. So... Okay, it fits pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to take that back off to solder it. Anyway, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this back out. I'm going to go solder it real quick, bolt it back on, and then finish uh, temporarily assembling it so we can do an audio test. All right. Put this together. We'll give it a, a quick test just to see what it's going to sound like. I'm just going to 
Let's take a couple screws in it so it's not falling apart while I'm doing this test. Okay, that'll hold it together enough to do some testing. Okay, here we go. Testing one, two, three, testing the received quality of the AESS speaker on a Yuzu FT710. Testing one, two, three. I'm going to do that again. Testing one, two, three, testing the received quality of the AESS speaker on a Yuzu FT710. Testing one, two, three. So it definitely sounds different. Let's see if we can find some audio to listen to. So it definitely has more bass, and I think it definitely sounds better, without a doubt. So the next step is going to be for me to go out and then to go ahead and cut that center out on the lathe, and I'll do that next. Okay, so I'm going to just take this three-jaw chuck off, because obviously this has four sides, and it's not going to work very well. And You'll find that most most guys, when they get their lathe set up, they actually avoid doing this because these three jaw chucks, when you when you install them, it takes quite a bit of finagling to get one to run true on most lathes. So the last time I installed this chuck, I spent quite a bit of time with the adjustments on it to get it to run reasonably true. And it was, it was reasonably close at, at about a thousandths or maybe one and a half thousandths of run out, which is pretty good for a made in Taiwan wave. These chucks are quite heavy.
Okay, we are ready for final assembly. All right, we are ready for the final sound check. So that's 100% this external speaker. Now we'll fade in the internal speaker in the radio. You know, buying a nice home here for six. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, uh, and he wants to build a, a good size home, probably, I don't know, several thousand square feet, this, that, and the other. So the time to do a due deal was just looking for a different place. He's out with a realtor, and then I had him, uh, my, the guy that sold us our house was a great guy. I mean, he's still in it. He works for uh, Chase International. Definitely think it's an improvement. Anyway, yeah, we, we had our snow, and uh, we didn't have anything really overnight, but it was cold. It was 8, 9 degrees this morning when I got up. It's 35 heading down right now, so I think we'll see freezing probably by 6. And probably down in the low 20s again tonight or lower. We're supposed to get more snow and rain, not tomorrow too much, but uh, uh, Wednesday is supposed to be pretty heavy. And then come the weekend, uh, more stuff coming in. So we're finally getting our turn. So we didn't have anything to speak of at all, all December, and that's pretty unusual. So I think that was a worthwhile modification. That ended up costing me. So this speaker is $14.50 through Parts Express. I ordered it from Amazon, but it's out of stock through Amazon right now. But I will put the Amazon link down below just in case it does come back in stock. And at least it'll give you the specifications of the speaker. So if you want to chase one down, you'll be able to do it from that link. But I'm happy with how this turned out. It seems to be an improvement. And uh, I definitely improved the audio of this external speaker. And I think it's a better combination now than what I started with for very little investment. So I will... Uh, I'll put together all the audio clips that I've gathered so far, and we'll compare them back to back. In fact, let's do one more test. With the recorded audio, pre-recorded audio that I had. Testing one, two, three. Testing the received quality of the AESS speaker on a Yuzu FT710. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, testing the received quality of the AESS speaker on a Yuzu FT710. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, testing the received quality of the AESS speaker on a Yuzu FT710. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, testing the received quality of the AESS speaker on a Yuzu FT710. Testing one, two, three. Testing one two three. Testing the received quality of the AESS speaker on a Yuzu FT seven ten. Testing one two three. There you go. So a little bit of a modification made a little bit of an improvement. Thanks for watching.